Welcome to the first Zoom safari. My name is Nathan Askew, and I've set up this potential disaster in the hopes of getting everybody more information on, on hunting, namely hunting in Africa. Um, we've already chatted a little bit, and I've done a bit of a roll call, and uh, I really appreciate everybody's attendance here, and, and this is going to be fun. So uh, basically, the, the goal the goal of these meetings is to get good content out on kind of a new platform. Of course, we're stuck in the middle of this COVID-19 uh, situation. And, and what we love to do, which is travel and hunt, has been slowed or shut down. And then, of course, we're all into Africa. And it's real hard to get over there right now. So this is how I came about uh, on the plan to provide a little bit of relief, something fun to do, and also uh, to start building a, a log of good information. Um, so, you know, the more hunters that we have interested, um, the more it's going to perpetuate our sport and the more it's going to preserve habitat in Africa. And as you all know, we're, I'm not going to preach a lot on this, but, but hunters pay for more habitat than any other person. Uh, we protect more acres of wilderness than, than all of the national parks combined. Um, and, and hunters are really the driving force of conservation in Africa. So your efforts, uh, although misinterpreted sometimes by, by ignorant people that don't understand conservation and hunting are much appreciated. So the idea is to, perpetu to perpetuate our sport and the idea is to, is to keep it around for future generations. So that's, you know, that's, that's our main goal, that and to protect animals and, and to have a good time. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, I am not from Africa. I am from America. So it's very rare for there to be a, a, a professional hunter or an outfitter that is actually foreign born. And it's even more rare that it would be American. There's just not a lot of those anymore. Uh, it was a dream of mine since I was a young kid. Um, I read books about by Capstick and J.A. Hunter, and, and I just really could not believe that those things happened. Those adventures were had by, by real people. And then I didn't know anything about Dallas Safari Club. I didn't know anything about SCI. I didn't know that you could still hunt an elephant. I, I grew up in a, in a small farming community, and... Uh, and we did not hang out with people that went on 21 day full bag safaris. But the, the more I learned about it and the more I was interested and the more I got interested, I, I, I suck out, uh, I decided to seek knowledge on it. And then I found out that people actually do that. And then I found out that you can be a professional hunter in Africa. And then I left the corporate world and set my sights on, on accomplishing the goal of being a, a professional hunter in Africa, and, and I started in Mozambique. I started my apprenticeship on dangerous game. I've hunted and been licensed and licensed in Mozambique, South Africa, and Tanzania. I've hunted Botswana uh, and Zimbabwe. Um, so it's been a wild ride. Um, but the story, this meeting is not necessarily about me. This meeting is uh, is a, about hunting dangerous game. So um, I'd. Uh, I've asked everybody to send in some questions and everybody's done that um, and I appreciate it. And we're gonna dive, we're gonna dive right into it. Basically my, my format, which may or may not be a good idea is to um, start with the first person that emailed me um, and go through one or two of what I considered the, their best questions or questions that were not repeated down the line. Um, so I guess, I'll, I'll say the name and I'll read the question. And then I'd like the person to kind of um, just chime in, say something about it. You don't have to repeat the whole question for me, but if you'd like to add a little information or why you asked it, then please go ahead. Um, and then I'll work through those questions. And I think we're going to run out of time before we run out of questions, right? So that's, that's good. Um, I've kind of slated this thing for an hour. Uh, it's, about 10 after eight right now. And um, 
actually it's either 10 or 20 after eight. I got two different clocks going right here. But anyway, we'll do this for about an hour. If anybody has to drop out after that, I understand. If it goes, I mean, this can be a six pack meeting or a 12 pack meeting. I don't care. I mean, we can go for an hour or we can go for two hours. Doesn't make any difference to me. I'm available. So um, if anybody has any questions for me, go ahead and, and, and hit me up now. Any general questions? If not, I'll start off with our first dangerous game hunting question. All right, looks like we're good to go. Um, the first one that I want to go with is uh, Mr. Tom. Um, Tom, you asked, you asked a specific question about leopard. And the question that I have here is uh, on a leopard hunt, how does the time of the year, the moon phase, um, or other conditions factor into the success of a leopard hunt? Um, so Tom, go ahead and you have anything to add on that or can I just take it as at face value here? Yeah, hey, uh, thanks Nathan. I uh, really appreciate you organizing and doing this thing and answering the questions and everything. So I'm, I'm hoping to do a uh, elephant and leopard hunt in 2021. Um, you know, obviously all this COVID stuff, you know, who knows how that's all going to play out, but that's the goal. So I think that's going to be definitely a challenge, you know, going for two, you know, prime species like that in a relatively short period of time. And so I'm, I'm hoping to optimize my opportunities uh, to get a shot on both of those species uh, in the same time. And so that's kind of where that question came from. So I'll, I'll pass it over to you. Yes, sir. All right. So that's a great, uh, that's going to be a great hunt. Now, you're going for two. You're going for two key species um, at the same time. And in, in really, you're got, you guys are going to hear me say that. Say this many. I'm going to repeat it. Right. The main thing is that you pick the right area, um, the right area for elephant, and the right area for leopard are not going to be always the same area. And most of the time, actually, they're not, right? I don't know how big of an elephant you're looking for. Um, but, you know, if you're just looking for a representative uh, chance at a 40 to a 60 pound tusker, and then you're looking for a mature male cat, you, you'll struggle to find areas that produce both of those. Uh, you really will. So that's one thing to consider when planning your hunt. You may, um, we can dive deeper into, into your individual goals. And I'm happy to advise whether you would hunt with us or with somebody else, doesn't matter. But the first thing is gonna be the area on that. Now, um, back to the leopard and that specific question. I get a lot and I've read a lot. All right, that's a lie, I don't read that much. I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions about moon phase and leopard because a lot of guys have written books and they get really into this uh, moon phase and then the clients read these books and they get all amped up about the darn moon. Now, there is no question that the moon affects animals and animal movement. No question at all. It more affects, uh, I'd say your grass eaters, i.e. the prey of a leopard than it affects the leopard. The leopard's gonna do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. He's a thinking, almost a rational animal. I mean, as far as an animal can be rational, uh, a leopard is the smartest uh, and most savvy of all the big five, if you ask me. So, well, leopard and elephant, they're both smart. So really, um, the moon phase, yeah, it, it, it does affect things, but it has not, over my career, affected our success on leopard. Now, I can speak for myself because... Um, I know how many leopard hunts I've done. And I know how many leopard we've shot. And, uh, and it does not matter the moon phase. It does not matter. And I also, the last 12 years of my career, I have hunted in the best leopard place on planet Earth, right? And that was another question somebody asked. There is no question that Tanzania has more leopard than about anywhere else. So. I'm hunting, I'm fortunate to be able to hunt in very prime areas, and we have a ton of leopard. They, I mean, they're, they're jumping on baits left and right, and, and we are choosing which leopard to put our effort into. We are not looking for a leopard, right? We're looking for the right leopard. So my experience in these very, very good leopard areas may be very different than 
a guy that hunted leopard in South Africa for most of his career. He would probably tell you that everything makes a huge difference, right? Um, now, I know we can't hunt leopard in South Africa right now, but those are pressured cats. Those are, are predators that have been harassed and grew up being harassed. And the leopard I'm hunting are in a natural state. So the moon, if you hunt in a good area, don't worry about the moon phase. That's my take on it. And I've hunted a bunch of leopard. So other PHs may disagree, which brings me to another general point on all this stuff that I say. Um, you know, the best thing is to listen to your pH. If he advises to come here, he may have other reasons than just the moon phase, right? Maybe his, his anniversary is the week before and he doesn't want you there. Who knows, right? There are people too. So listen to your pH because he's going to put you in the right situation. If you pick the right pH, he's going to put you in the right situation. But if it comes down to me and moon phase, I don't worry about it. I'm more worried about booking a buffalo hunter before my leopard hunter. So I've got the process going with me. I'm more worried about different logistics than, than the moon. Uh, all right, so enough about that. Uh, moving on to your next question. I hope I answered that one good enough and I probably spent too much time on it because I like, I like leopard hunting. But um, the next one is about elephant and movement. Now, I, I'm gonna leave that one, Tom, and I'm gonna move on to the next person for the interest of time, if that's all right with you. All right, how'd, how'd I do? Is that a good, is that good enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great, thanks much. All right, now I also don't wanna talk the whole time, so does anybody have a follow-up question on that? I mean, I covered a lot of stuff. Uh, as, well, I talked a lot, I don't know if I covered a lot of stuff. Does anybody have a follow-up question on that that we can talk or anybody wanna to add to it? Because I really don't wanna talk the whole time on this thing. All right, nobody's got nothing to say. I'm moving on. All right, Mr. Art, where are you at, Art? I'm right here. I uh, chipped my uh, wisdom tooth, so I'm having a little bit of an issue. Yeah, that's that's a yeah that, that is an issue. Are you uh, you want me to move on to somebody else? Are you ready to? Are you? No, are no, you I'm good. To... I'm good. All right, perfect, perfect. Um, and and that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic about what to bring on safari. Actually in my, in my safari kit, I travel with this putty that you shove into somebody's uh, molar to do a instant fix, right? Uh, because I've had that problem on safari and it can be very, very painful. Um, all right, Mr. Art, you asked me, you sent several good questions and most of them were about guns. I think it was about, most of them were about shooting. So, you asked me, all right, so I, I like two of your questions because they led me to two different things. Now, there's several people that asked about caliber. Now, um, I think Mr. Blum asked me about caliber. I think uh, three or four other people did. So you asked me, what is, my, what is your recommended caliber and bullet type for each of the big five? So um, you want to expand on that any, or you want me to kind of take that at face value and roll with it? Well, I always get, y'all get different answers from different pHs. I have a 416 Rigby that I would use. It likes 400 grain A-frames just fine. Yep. You know, but some guys don't like that for various game. I wouldn't, I don't think it would be suitable for Leopard. Okay. It might, I mean, you might use something else for leopard. So I just wonder what your thoughts and opinions were on that subject. Okay. So how I structured it out is I, I structured out uh, lion, leopard, elephant, and buffalo. And then I picked my favorite calibers and bullets. So that'll be kind of just some statistical information that I'll roll through. Um, before I start with that, though, one of the more one of kind of the more important things is that you can only travel with so many guns on a safari. And if you're, if you're in an area with a lot of game, you're going to be able to maybe have a chance at two or three of the big five in one area. Right? So caliber selection is not always going to be the perfect caliber for every animal. Um, and I think y'all know that, right? So 
that being said, another another one of you asked me what my favorite caliber was, and and I broke that question down into two um, two parts. My favorite caliber for me is a 470 Nitro Express double rifle, but my job is to shoot when things have really got out of hand and really really close. That is not a hunting caliber in my opinion. Most people are not proficient with that. Um, now the the best caliber for a client in Africa, hands down, is a 375 H and H. Not a Ruger, not a something else strange. A 375 H and H because it can kill anything. It shoots accurate. It's a long range. I mean, you can shoot it accurately out to 300 yards if you know what you're doing. It shoots a big enough bullet. It uh, you can hunt an elephant with it. Uh, you can turn it into basically a, a 300 win mag with a, a with the right load and a light bullet. You can um, kill buffalo with it. But most importantly, people shoot that gun really, really well. It's manageable recoil. It's uh, it's it's just the best all around all around gun for Africa. Um, so anyway, but to start it off, we'll we'll start with lion. Um, now lion. My favorite caliber for a lion will be a 375 H and H. Um, the bullet is going to be a swift A frame bullet. So I could go into why and we could talk about different stuff, but I, I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll through it and then I'm going to let you come back to me, Art, because I think you're pretty knowledgeable on this stuff as well. So um, now from lion, we we go to leopard. Now, Leopard, I'm, I'm going to go with a 375 as well because it's required by law in most places. It is a little bit overkill for a Leopard. So what I do on our Leopard hunts is I recommend a special load for all my clients. Uh, they're going to bring three different types of bullets with a 375. They're going to bring solids. They're going to bring swift A-frames. And they're going to bring a lighter Nosler Acubon 260 grain bullet, which is my favorite bullet for leopards. It absolutely kills the shit out of them. You load it real fast and it it just kills them. Um, so it, it, it that, that's the one to use. Now, your leopard hunt and success is going to be dictated on first collecting bait. So um, and the more you shoot that gun, the more confidence you have in it. And a 375 is great for collecting bait. And we're going to use the different bullets for it. But anyway, Leopard Nosler Acubon loaded really, really fast, uh, 260 grain. Um, elephant. So elephant is uh, elephant are, are, are great to hunt. A lot of fun. You you, you need a. So I, I'm on the 458 calibers and up on elephant. So. To me, it doesn't matter. A uh, 416 is great. So let's say the 40 calibers and up. Um, I really like a 458 lot bolt action for my clients to bring. Um, that 458 lot, it uh, shoots a 500 grain bullet as opposed to the 400 grain bullets out of most of your 416. So you've got an extra 100 grains of wallop if things don't go the right way. Now. There was a lot of questions about elephants and how do you pick the shot and all these things. And it, it, on elephant hunt, the elephant picks the shots a lot of times. So you need to be prepared for anything. Um, but you want a 458 lot and a Barnes banded solid. That's what I would pick every single time. That gun's a very good penetrator. Um, and it also has a 500 grain bullet for a, for a frontal shot or breaking bone or knockdown. It's a, uh, it, it's a good all around. I like a bolt action for a client uh, because elephant hunts don't always end in one shot. I've seen a lot of mistakes on first time elephant hunts. And the faster you can work that bolt and put another one in them and another one in them, the better off you are. So that's gun and caliber, that's gun and bullet for elephant. Now, buffalo. So, buffalo, everybody's got an opinion on. Uh, most countries, all countries, uh, recommend a 375 or bigger. Um, once again, my favorite thing is a 375 H&H &H for Buffalo. Yeah, a 416 is better. 
if you can shoot a 416 as good as you can shoot a lighter caliber, bring the bigger gun, right? It's more weight and buffalo are very tough. But in my experience, you need penetration and I need a good first shot. So to me, people just shoot that 375 better. Um, and then bullets. So bullets on a buffalo, you're going to go with different types of bullets. I like, I like my clients to load a expandable bullet first and then solids all the way down. So that's how I instruct my clients to load their gun. Um, the, uh, and, and my favorite, uh, favorite bullets are, a, are a Barnes, uh, a Barnes X bullet or a Swift A frame 300 grain and, uh, out of that 375. And then you're going to follow that up with a good solid, uh, Right now, I don't know if you can get the the Barnes monolithic solid in 375 anymore. I believe there was some ATF stuff with that a few years ago, uh, but a good solid to, to round that out. So anyway, uh, Art, I'm gonna let you hit me back. What uh, did I, do you agree, sir? Do you disagree? What do you think? No, oh, you're the first guy in a long time I've heard about reloading solids after, a, after an A-frame or a Barnes. Most, most people now just tell us to continue loading A-frames or the same bullets you were shooting. Because it's, it's always difficult in my experience when I, when I change bullets to find them to shoot to the same point when I have multiple loads in there unless they're from the same company. Like if I were shooting Woodleys, I could probably get the Woodleys to group the same. Okay. Um, well, the I've got reasons for what I, for what I say, and I may or may not be right. So I, I, I'll, I'll come back to you on that one. Um, so yes, accuracy is very, very important. Um, a 375 H and H will eat about anything and hit something about that big. It doesn't matter. I mean, those 375s, they really take about any ammunition and they hit in, in darn near the same place. Your follow-up shots an inch or two on your target at home may seem like a big deal. On your follow-up shot, when the sticks are moving and the buffalo herd's moving and the buffalo's going this way or this way, an inch is not your biggest problem at that time. Your biggest problem at that time is getting another shot in him, number one. And a close second problem is if it's a bad shot, uh, and the animals coming at you, which rarely happens, but it does happen. You need to get a bullet into the front of that animal immediately to save the day. It's your chance to, to be the hero and it's time to save the damn day. Now, how are you going to save the day in the middle of nowhere, Africa, where there's a bunch of little trees and then there's this buffaloes coming right at you. And if you have a solid bullet behind a solid bullet for your second shot, you are going to penetrate a uh, Mopani sapling and that bullet will continue in a straight line because you've aimed right at that buffalo's nose and hit him and still penetrate into his face and even into his body cavity. So you have, instead of having a ricochet and a deflection with an expandable bullet under a O oh shit circumstance you your bullet has continued on its path and it has hit your target and it has penetrated that animal and even if you miss the brain you penetrated down into his chest cavity so the second reason is in reverse that buffalo is running away well i want you to get through the hip bone through his guts and into his chest cavity i want you to penetrate all the way up that animal and Swift A-frames are great bullets. Barnes X's are great bullets. But that increase in surface diameter when the bullet enters the animal reduces penetration and does not have the desired effect. So please, well, once again, do what your pH tells you. But if you're hunting with me, expandable first, solids all the way down. Can I ask a question? That's good. All right. Uh, yeah, somebody... Um, uh, somebody else tried to chime in there. What was the follow-up question there? Who was that? Uh, it's Graham. I, I'm not an experienced buffalo hunter at all. I've only been involved in four, but 
I understand what you're saying if you have to penetrate small saplings or, or whatever with the solids, but my own buffalo, when you were talking about running away, I ended up shooting twice, but I didn't hit the hip bones. But the problem I found all four buffalo, well, no, three out of the four, because the one guy used A-frames all the way through, um, that's solid unless you hit bone. It doesn't do any damage. The whereas a, a a frame or turns or whatever, when you hit them in the body, it does damage. Yep. Yeah. That that that, that is true. It does damage for a shorter linear length. Um, but your job as the hunter is to place a good first bullet through that animal's boiler room chest and so forth. So that's your best chance at damage to major organs and tissue that cause quick death. Afterwards, in a remote area, safety is my second concern. After the placement of your first shot, it is your safety and the safety of my crew. And once again, forget about a sapling. Forget about hitting an obstacle. What if uh, that buffalo is coming towards you and, you and you hit him in the nose? Uh, the bullet expands and does not penetrate straight line, you've wasted a shot, right? So I, in my experience, solids do do a lot of damage, uh, not as much to soft tissue. You're very right. I mean, you, you're very right. They don't do as much damage to soft tissue. But on follow-up shots, um, I'm assuming that you did your job as the client and put a good bullet in him first, and then I am worried about structural damage to anchor that animal and to prevent uh, pending problem. So that, that's my philosophy on it. Um, yeah. And you know, it's one of those things. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, in a perfect world, you hit him with that first shot and let's say it's a good or bad shot, but he just kind of hunkers up and, and waits for your next one. Well, great. I wish you did have a, a, a soft behind it, but the Buffalo I hunt, they typically don't. It's just everything kind of breaks loose after that buff, after that first bullet gets gets hit. Um, now, anyway, so so that's my reasoning. But I do understand your point. Um, I do understand your point, Art. It's a uh, it's your question. What what uh, does anybody else have something to say about the buffalo, or or is, I'm going to let Art go into the tell me tell me what he thinks about my elephant, leopard, and lion selection. No other. You're on mute, Art. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for someone else to ask a question, Charlie. Oh, okay. So, so hey, Nathan, I'll just tell you, the pH that I hunted with for buffalo gave the same uh, philosophy that you just espoused. It was expanding bullet first, then solids. Uh, and in my case, the expanding bullet was found five feet back in the animal's rumen. And the second shot was a solid, went through both shoulders, both lungs, and put a big hole in the heart too. So uh, that was that was the uh, taking to the undertaker shot for sure. Good deal. Good deal. Who, who did you hunt with? Uh, who did you hunt with? Oh, uh, that was uh, Henny Dutoit with uh, African Sky at that on that hunt. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, all right. Uh, any other? Uh, what about on these lines? Does anybody anybody have any other experience on lines and bullets, or or does anybody want to add to the, or does anybody want to have a anything to say about my suggestions there? This was a pretty common question for everybody. I mean, I saw a lot of bullet selection questions. All right. We'll move on down the. We'll move on down the line. Good question, Art. I appreciate it. Um, you had another one uh, that I do want to to touch on, and I'm going to touch on it quick. Um, you asked about shooting sticks um, uh, to shoot offhand or to use shooting sticks, and um, really, it's it's important to be able to do both. It's very important to be able to do both. I, I recommend once a big game caliber is uh, is selected and sighted in, 
that you practice off the sticks and you practice offhand. And you really should practice offhand probably a little bit more uh, than you're used to. Um, the uh, be able to shoot off the sticks out to 150, 200, and know what your big game bullet. If you've chosen a 416, know what your big game, know what that 416 bullet's going to do it at 150 yards. The reason I say that is it it does come up to where you may have to use that gun in a longer distance situation than it's made for. So know the drop on these big calibers. Uh, but as far as practicing, one of my favorite things to tell my clients to do is um, is this is a practice routine that goes something like this. Basically, once the gun's sighted in, go ahead and put on your ammo belt, right? Um, now, I'll show you my stuff here in a second. I, I have some, I brought some visual aids for this party, so I'll show you some of my stuff uh, and, and show you why, how I have my things configured um, if we get to that. But put on your ammo belt, right? That ammo belt's important. Now, please wear your ammo in the front of your body unless you physically can't get to it there. If you wear your ammo back here and it, it, this takes a whole lot longer than this. Wear your ammo right here. So put that on, get all dressed up, even put on your safari hat, and then go out and fire the first shot off sticks at 100 yards. And immediately reload your gun and hit a target offhand at 50 yards, and immediately reload your gun and hit a target offhand at 20 yards. Why do I do that? That's a realistic hunting situation. Um, we're talking about dangerous game. We're talking about big calibers. Practice how you're going to play. I, I was big into sports when I was younger, and, and you know, wrestling practice was not to grab ass around. It was serious, and you got down to business because you don't practice hard, you're not going to play hard. Habits, habits, good and bad, are – are what you're stuck with when the chips are down. So wear your ammo belt, fire three shots um, in succession, and please reload, shoot again. I mean, that's what I tell my people all the time. First shot off of sticks, second shot at 50 yards, offhand, third shot 20 yards offhand. Um, and then don't shoot that, don't shoot that 416. You're not supposed to shoot a box of shells, right? Uh, that thing will. That, that it can hurt your brain. I mean, it, 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 you've already got a cracked tooth, right? You don't need to shoot. You don't need to shoot the gun that many times. Shoot it six times and put it up. Come back next week and do it again. So th that's my practice. And really, uh, you get good doing both, and you will use both. I think most people would agree that um, that on a dangerous game hunt, you're going to shoot off the sticks and you're going to shoot freehand. So. Um, that, that was a good question, and you're the only one that asked about shooting sticks, so I wanted to throw that out there. Um, anybody anybody got any, any add-on to that one? Is top and off in there? Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's a good plan too, right? Um, buffalo, buffalo and elephant use up the most bullets, but by far buffalo, right? So being able to top up a magazine um it's important but it usually isn't that important um yes i want you to be able to do it but really what i want you to be able to i want you to be able to load your magazine efficiently um but really what i want you to do is unload that magazine really efficiently um Usually after three or four shots out of a bolt action rifle, um, your backup guy is there. I mean, usually the, the gig is up and, and, and the animals are gone and you will be able to reload uh, and you'll be shaking and the bullets will fall down and all that good stuff that, that makes dangerous game exciting. But you'll have time to reload the magazine. But yes, that is great. If you're going to use a double, which that's how I practice with a double rifle. I, I shoot both barrels every time in practice, and then I break it open, I reload, and I shoulder again. 
and that's how I practice with the double. So with the double rifle, very important. With the with a uh, magazine rifle, I, it, it's important, but not but not nearly as important. Working that bolt, handling a jam, um, and unloading the rifle accurately and quickly are, are the are the main thing. So, but good question. Thank you. Anybody Mr. else? On Nathan, that? if you got a second. Yeah, go ahead. When you talk about going through that regime of 100 yards, sticks, then 50, then 20, what's you know what's kind of the the general guideline for time wise? 20 seconds, 10 seconds. What what's that generalization in there? As fast, really as fast as you can. I okay. mean, and the first time you do it, I mean, if you have a partner that can time you, being under a clock, being under a stopwatch. It is a good idea because just the idea of being timed or the idea of your hunting buddy watching you or being able to make fun of you afterwards, sure. that, that adds some needed pressure because there will be a little pressure on most people when you make this shot. Um, so, so that's good to put yourself under a clock is good. And you'll find the first time you do it, the first time you do it, you know, 20 seconds, because um, you're going to be really worried. You're offhand. You're going to be doing whatever pattern you do, and you're going to wait because you're worried about hitting a piece of paper. But then as you get – or the sticks are going to get in the way, right? Your, 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 your sling will get hung up in the sticks. I mean, you'll find that your first few times you'll screw it up. I mean, you'll screw it up, especially under a, under a little bit of pressure. Um, so it is a good idea to time yourself and then just as fast as you can. I mean, the faster, the better. But once again, accurate accuracy is the most important. Um, sure. Accuracy is the most important. Sure. I appreciate it. No problem. Anybody else? 